Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's a kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Everybody, welcome to episode one motherfucking hundred of <laughs> Table Reads. <laughs> Here we are. We did it. We 100. Did it. Yay! Yay! That's a lot of episodes. Puppet flails. There's so many triple digit episodes. <laughs> the first of the first of the triple digits. The first of the triple digits. So, yeah, here we are. Um, today, we are reading the first part of John Borman's Lord of the Rings from 1970. And I just want you to stop and think about what Lord of the Rings would have looked like in 1970 as a live action film. Creedence Clearwater Revival in the background. <clears throat> helicopters. <laughs> they would have probably explored Frodo's coke habit. <laughs> <laughs> you I just me? mean visually you looking speaking. At me? Oh, oh, looking oh, at me? oh, okay. Oh, 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 it can't be that that bad animated Hobbit movie that like reminds me of what it's like to feel sick. <laughs> Like you the, mean the rotoscope the Hobbit? or the some Hobbit? Shit. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah. like the animation like reminds me of what you like see everything when you got like a fever and you're throwing well, up everything's like everything mushy is all gross. mushy. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny that you should mention that. Uh-oh. Um <laughs> it made people sick. <laughs> you you recall uh the last movie we did, I didn't have a whole lot of info about what went down with it. There was a lot of contradictory info. Mm-hmm. This one, I know exactly what went down with it Ooh. directly from the writer's mouth. Ooh. Words typing that he did. Not his mouth, probably. They but. had coffee. <laughs> He's like, Dick, take this. <laughs> so, write this down. Talk about it on your podcast. <laughs> if it's not live stream, I'll kill you. My dearest so, Sean. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's get into the background of this script. Please, oh, okay. yeah. Let's because listen. Yeah, there's actually crazy. a lot of it, and I don't want the music to run out. Here we go. <laughs> hurry, hurry. So, John Borman is a director best known for Deliverance. Excalibur, and the cinematic masterpiece, Zardoz. But before those films, he pitched a film about the wizard Merlin to United Artists. They did not go for it. But they did ask him if he'd be willing to make a film of Lord of the Rings, as they had recently bought the rights from a reluctant J.R.R. Tolkien, who wanted some extra money to set up a trust for his grandkids. Borman seemed the obvious choice for the project because... They had no idea what to do with it, and he had just pitched them a wizard movie. (laughs) That's how you describe Lord of the Rings, the wizard movie. (laughs) So, understanding that a Lord of the Rings film was going to be entirely impossible to make, Borman, of course, accepted. With an incredibly challenging film to work on, he set about hiring a co-writer. Luckily, he had recently met an architect who wanted to give screenwriting a shot. And thus, Ross Bo Pallenberg got his first screenwriting gig. Hey, I thought you said he hired J.R. Tolkien because he, <laughs> so, he needed money. <laughs> so the pair went to Borman's home in Ireland, where they wrote for six months in a room they had wallpapered with every page of the Lord of the Rings saga, presumably in an attempt to understand the story through osmosis? What uh, the fuck? <laughs> I just know people like that, though. There must have been some concern that this wasn't insane enough, though, because they also filled the room with conspiracy theory style charts and cross references with yarn and shit. Incredible. If you've ever wondered how a serial killer writes a screenplay, this is most likely how. <laughs> it does seem like the intro to True Detective. Now, while, while Borman and Pallenberg were holed up writing, UA was releasing a bunch of box office flops, including John Borman's most recent film, Leo the Last. Have you guys heard of it? No. no. Neither have I. I watched the first one. <laughs> <laughs> By the time they had a script ready to show, the executive who had asked them to make it had been fired. Everyone else there was baffled by the script because, according to Borman, none of them had read the books. Now, perhaps if he had understood that reading a book should not be a prerequisite to understanding a movie, he would not have been so surprised when they rejected it. But don't worry. Borman came out of the deal all right. 
Just because UA was unwilling to spend the kind of money that would be required to bring a fantasy script that they didn't understand to life did not mean they weren't going to use the rights they'd acquired. So in order to avoid any potential legal conflicts, they did purchase the script from Borman for a reported $3 million. Holy shit. And then hired Ralph Bakshi to make the animated films of the property. Gross. Bakshi mm. did not use Borman's script. How much money is that in 1970s yeah, look dollars? That up real quick, no. I want to know. Now, Borman said that the process of writing Lord of the Rings influenced his writing on Zardoz and Excalibur. So it can only be assumed that he and Pallenberg were at some point locked in a room with Thomas Mallory's Le Mort de Arthur plastered all over the walls, finally making that Merlin movie. $6.6 million. Merlin movie. The one with the guy from Jurassic Park. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a great movie. I Excalibur. Call it great. Was it no. Th- it's, it had fucking Sean Connery. Great. Wait. Are we talking about Zardoz Mer- had Sean Connery? Are we talking about Merlin or are we talking about Excalibur? Excalibur. Wait, oh. those are different. Oh movies? no, Merlin was okay. That's a that different, was a different movie. That was no. like a uh, like a TV movie. A kid in King Arthur. Sam Court? Neil was not in Excalibur. Okay, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you bred raptors. Raptors. You bred raptors. Bad. No expense. Okay, <laughs> guys, let's do this. Let's jack in. Here we go. Fade in. Boom. Is that too much? No. Maybe it's too much. We're probably going to start in the Shire. (laughs) J.R.R. Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings. Screenplay by John Borman and Rosbo Pallenberg. 12-17-1970. And for some reason in the top right corner, it reads number 24. Don't know why. It's just how they connect. It's one of them conspiracy theories. All the dots, yeah. Interior, book-lined study, day. A small room cluttered with books. Thin sunshine plays on the desk while an elderly man is bent over his writing. He turns slowly as though disturbed and peers across his spectacles at the intruding camera. J.R.R. Tolkien. What? Uh, Uh, What? Who plays J.R.? Already? Tolkien is in the movie, apparently. Yes, what is this? Why is this happening? It's a fourth wall break. Already? Immediately. Exterior. Model of Middle Earth and an amalgam of locations. Night and day. Titles begin. The Lord of the Rings. Moving away from the incandescent furnace of of boiling lava in the volcanic crater of Mount Doom. Sulfurous fumes rise into a luminous night sky. Back further to show a barren, broken terrain with angry fortifications carved out of living rock. It is the land of Mordor, the domain of Sauron. Surrounding it all like a barrier reef is a wall of towering height and endless length, sometimes with battlements, sometimes linking natural rock formations so that it seems to grow out of the desolate, boulder-strewn land itself. Music. Heroic, yet melancholic. Nailed it. A feeling of nostalgia for the now lost world of Middle Earth, with its legends and sagas, songs and stories. Out of the music emerges a chorus chanting a lament. The voices belong to children and old men. Okay, let's all do this together. Same time, same time. Three rings for the. I guess we needed a. Uh, How does it go? Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the dark lord on his dark throne. In the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them. One ring to bring them all. And in the darkness bind them. In the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Titles con- titles continue. They were good. They beat the slaps. The land of Mordor is lit by lightning streaking the sky. Dominating the desolate plain between Mount Doom and the Great Wall 
is a monolithic tower that stretches upwards, rivaling the mountain itself. Above this tower of Sauron, the outline of an eye appears, turning its penetrating gaze across the landscape. <laughs> Retreating from Mordor, over the wall as the evil eye fades away, across an empty plain, the Pelennor Fields, and on to the fortress city of Minas Tirith in the land of Gondor. Watchful sentries patrol the battlements. Flares burn on its outer walls. And I'm going to pause for a moment because there's something that I meant to ask you guys at the top. Okay. Have either of you read the books? I have. But I haven't read them since 11th and 12th grade in high school. So that's... Great. 2003 to... Wow, you were in one. high school in 2004? Yeesh. 2003. That was I, my last year. I graduated in 2007. Yeah, he's very young. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such an old man. Have you read the books, Jeff? That's a negative. That's a big negative. You've seen the movies, though. Jeff, I hope you won't be offended by me saying that does not surprise me. <laughs> no, 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 dude. I, just a lot of smashing puss. Like, that was kind of my thing. <laughs> you know, down here in Alabama, we don't have no books about rings. <laughs> Here, books are for burning unless they the Bible. And it better be the right Bible. The only rings we're interested in, college football rings, goddammit. Roll Tide. <laughs> There's only one Lord, and it's not of the rings. It's of my soul. <laughs> and the wedding ring from a knocked up cousin. Tracy was beautiful. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Into the land. Jeff, have you seen the movies? Have I seen the movies? Yes, uh, I have. <laughs> Good. But you don't remember them very well. I think we discussed that earlier. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna, probably going to make a lot of people mad. I, 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 there were multiple viewings, uh, lots of naps, but I got through them. Oh, there's another thing I need to address. Real quick, Kelly was supposed to be here for the 100th episode. Wah, She's wah. Not, but uh, <laughs> oh, shit. That's some really good editing. <laughs> but there's like no women in this script for quite some time, probably. Nah, judging really. from the books and the existing movies. Um. And also, Kelly's a busy lady, and I was tired of waiting for her. So she, she is very busy and fancy. She's just going to flit in and out of scripts as she's available. She'll come in. She'll go out. She'll take over some female characters for me, because let's face it, I do most of the ladies. That's true. You do do most of the ladies. <laughs> no, that's John. what I do. That's why I do. Boom! <laughs> right here on this table. Nobody's read Lord of the Rings <laughs> doing the lady. Those days are past <laughs> for me. I got one lady. Just the one. Just she she the doesn't one. listen to this, man. You can you can, <laughs> <laughs> you can really stretch the wings. It's true. She doesn't listen. <laughs> wah, but wah. that's okay. To the podcast. She always listens to Sean. Sean gets it done. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, what made me think of Kelly not being here is Kelly would be very angry at you. It's true. Because oh, yeah. I'm she's, pretty sure Kelly has the books memorized. Yeah, she's pretty hardcore into it. That's yeah. extreme. Like I could, I, so just since we're going to get all this out of the, like I tried reading it, but all the names sounded so similar that by the time I got through like the first four chapters, I didn't know who was. What are doing you talking what. about? Are you, do you get Boromir and Faramir mixed up? Right, I didn't know. Who what about Bilbo and Frodo? Everybody is so unique. It wasn't even those. It was like Sauron and Saruman. Uh, it was like fucking Digimon's hard enough, and I was trying to keep up. <laughs> but at this point, I like I, I was like fuck. Like I don't know who's the bad guy. I don't know who's the guy. so I watched the movies, and I if still had name, a hard time. Like if their name starts with an S and ends with an N, they're a bad guy. True. And that's what's, all you need to know. What's Samwise last name? <laughs> Damji. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> nice try. I we That's were why nice I did the try, ends with nice an N. Try. I was just going to say it starts with an S. But, uh... Ah, that's good. <laughs> all right. So, so now we know where we all stand. By the way, I have read the books and watched the movies. Mm -hmm. I've watched the movies so many times. Uh, I have been itching for a rewatch. And I, think I I'm watched them that again tomorrow. recently, and I hadn't realized how amazingly campy they are. Like they're they're a little cheesy. Like really, yeah, yeah. I felt I was watching it and like it's everything is very overstated and super dramatic and a little cheesy. Like I, and when I watched them originally, okay, like look, I fucking cried when Gandalf died. Most of like, the movie are people walking, so you gotta be a little dramatic. No, I realize that. I realize that. But like it had been a long time since I seen the film, so it's like once I watched them again, I was like, wow, I don't remember this being so. 
I mean, it wasn't gritty and. Well, I'm gonna find out because sure. I think I'm gonna rewatch them tomorrow. Yeah. Well, like, because because those are the moments I always stick with, like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. I always like the, the. And I'm the rereading the Harry Potter books right now, actually. <laughs> yeah, but the Harry. I've, I've, I'm I've, I'm I've, knee deep in Chamber of Secrets. I've I've re. I've listened to them all all of them on audio, but. That's but what I'm doing. My, my favorite moments read by aren't Stephen in Fry. Them. Oh, I didn't read the Stephen or listen to the Stephen Fry ones. I don't. It's think. the only reason I'm doing audiobooks instead of regular books is because it's Stephen Fry. You should do that because the guy who does the audiobooks that I listen to like hates children. <laughs> like he fucking hates them, and his Hermione doesn't change for eight books. You're like, ooh, Hetty. <laughs> no, I'm like, oh my god! But the moments that are always funny with me, the Lord of the Rings had so many of, is the heartfelt moments. Where they're just terribly acted. Like you said, my favorite one earlier is like, keep your secrets. <laughs> like, that's like one that's of my just, favorites. Really funny. Like, I love that. And in Harry Potter, it's the, you know, I'm not going home. <laughs> not really. Not like, really. <laughs> all book fans hate it when I'm like, that's my favorite line. <laughs> <laughs> so Fuck I, you, Jeff. Right, right. It's, the, the movies, I'm basic. Like, they didn't get interested to me until the fourth one. That was just because everybody died. It was the most metal one because it had the big spider and like the fucking ghost army and shit. Yeah. That shit was metal. Like, I was like, oh, the other two movies suck ass. This guy loves John Peter. It's like, oh, giant spider? (laughs) Fucking yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Fucking have him in there. If you've got a giant spider fighting ghost army, I don't care about either of them. So as many people that die, it's better. Jim West, Desperado. So that was was kind of what I am. I'm a very basic Lord of the Rings. I'll be. I'll be stoked about all the fights and shit. So, what, 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 like, fandom are you actually into? Uh, a lot. Just I, I'm gonna say of all of them. Batman, right? Batman probably the most in depth than I am because I like the okay. quieter moments, but yeah. only pieces of some. Of them. Yeah, let's so get he, back to the script because it's real fucking long. Okay. Oh, well, I, thought, I was hello. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Minas Tirith is strong and arrogant, but human. It is bruised from long years of war. It is a fine city that has gradually turned itself into a stockade, sacrificing everything to survival. It stares defiantly across the plain at its enemy, Mordor. One ring to rule them all, one ring to find them. Moving further and further away from the two lands of Mordor and Gondor, and across the shadowy peaks of the Misty Mountains, until a Apologies, everyone. The uh, the script is a Xerox, and it is not super legible, so I'm going to stutter a little bit. Until a blizzard extinguishes the view, down the other side of the mountain range, into mellower country, over the top of the mysterious forest of Fangorn, and down into its tangled, twisted depths, and emerging by dangerous rapids climbing high again above the silver thread of the great river, catching a glimpse of Theoden's castle, and over other castles and kingdoms having strange and convoluted shapes. This is the part where the screenwriters just tell us, we read these books, we know what all the stuff is, we know where all the places are, and we're just going to zoom over everything and tell you what it is, so you know that we know. And maybe it's like that little fan service where you're watching it, like do its little shot, and you're like, "Ooh, like ooh," and then you get to explain to me who lives there. Little, <laughs> like, little, little clockwork towns rising out of the, the out of the plane. Please don't write us paper letters on your pre-internet nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Got another letter today. Had <laughs> 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 a Polaroid dick picking. <laughs> <laughs> See you then. You gotta wait for that. <laughs> Arg. <laughs> uh, what the fuck was that? <laughs> Arg. <laughs> uh, uh, Theoden's castle and over other castles and kingdoms having strange and convoluted shapes. Built with arts long forgotten. Over vast, empty plains of grass. Over marshes and deserts and canyons. To the gardens and palace of Rivendell, the home of Elrond and the High Elves. The palace is lit by shafts of dawn sunshine that pierce its crystal walls, 
and translucent roofs so that its very substance is light itself. This sounds expensive. <laughs> Pierces. One yes. ring to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. The sun rises to its meridian over the whole land of Middle Earth and then falls away to the west and dips behind the soft, verdant hills of the Shire. The journey across Middle Earth is at an end, and we finally come to rest looking down into the cozy valley of the Shire. A road and a waterfall wind down through it. Titles end. It is late afternoon. Lights are twinkling in the cottages of hobbits. Seen from high up, the Shire is up. They're called Hobbit Holes. I'm writing the first letter. <laughs> you motherfucker. They're called Hobbit Holes. It's how the series starts. Bilbo in his hole. And then a description of what a Hobbit Hole is. Can someone out there please keep up with all of Sean's grievances for accuracy <laughs> to the books? Not not like letters and shit like that. Not me being like, there ain't enough pussy in this. Like, like keep up with Sean's grievances that are legitimate. <laughs> well, hey, your grievances are just as legitimate. Hey, thank you. I'm validating. There is a lack of pussy in this. Oh. Um, <laughs> Hobbit holes. Bring me back. When <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baggins. <laughs> tea bag Lights are tea twinkling bag. in the <laughs> cottages of hobbits. <laughs> That's somewhere, right? Sean, quick help. <laughs> Is there a Bilbo tea baggins? Any. <laughs> <laughs> it's good there, Kelly's There not, must be. It's good, gotta be, right? It's good Kelly's not here for that I'm one. I'm not even creative. Like, that's, no, that's, that's pretty low-hanging fruit. <laughs> oh. Anyway, sorry. We're gonna, sorry. <laughs> this is going to take literally a year Fucking to read this up. script. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> 100 <laughs> episodes. <laughs> Welcome to episode 200. <laughs> we finally finish up Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Uh, uh, cottages, uh, Hobbit, seen from high up, the Shire is a patchwork of neat fields and well-tended gardens. One house is a little higher than most, and much more boldly lit. Brightly colored lanterns sway from the trees in its garden, where a party is gathered. The sound of applause. Then a voice, very distant. You need to be Bilbo, you Frodo? Uh, yeah, is that... I think that's Is Bilbo. that Bilbo? I'm gonna say it's Bilbo. I'm gonna get... My dear, dear friends, hobbits of the Shire. Exterior, Bilbo's <laughs> courtyard, evening. A mellow, walled, and cobbled yard abutting to Bilbo's co cottage. It is something between a kitchen garden, a farmyard, and the cloister of a medieval monastery. Arches in the wall let out onto a vegetable patch, an orchid... Orchard, rather. Flower beds, grazing animals. Hanging in the surrounding trees are lanterns and jars of fireflies. The area is teeming with hobbits. A small, plump, jolly folk, done up in their Sunday best. They sit at long tables piled high with food. It is a rustic, Bruegel-like atmosphere? What is that? That sounds like a German word. Google that shit. Bruegel-like! With a touch of Arcadia, at the head of the top table, an old hobbit, Bilbo, is standing, making a speech. Exaggerated applause greets his unexpected opening remarks, and he is obliged to repeat them, holding up his hands for silence as overexcited hobbits cheer, clasp, and fall off their seats. There is a note of teasing irony in their behavior. Hobbits of the Shire, my dear people, the Bagginses, and the Boffins, the Tooks and the Brandy Bucks, the Grubs and the Chubs, the Good Bodies and the Proudfoots. A hobbit jumps up and shouts, Proud feet! More cheers and laughter. <laughs> <laughs> Today is my 111th birthday. Today I'm 111. Deafening cheers. Fists pound on tables. 11 one let's, let's have fun. 11 one let's, let's have fun. How many people turn 11 one that they have this chant, like, ready? I don't know. They have to wait for it to come around to rhyme with let's have fun. 
I Maybe. wrote this chant oh. 50 years ago only, just in case. Only every 10 years where they turn something one, they get to have that chant. Actually, Bilbo's not the oldest. There is the, the old gaffer. He's older. Make another comment. Mm. You add, you add it. To the- <laughs> making notes. I've been making notes on the thing whenever you say something. So literally, my thing is just if you that was me up, correcting myself, not the script. Hobbit. Oh, there's nothing to correct. Then carry on. <laughs> Bilbo quietens them. Every year I make a little speech, but this time I have something to say. Uh, something important to say. But he doesn't finish the sentence. There is a sudden glow of light over the yard. And then a crackling sound, followed by a bang. All heads swing upwards in the same direction. Against the violet sky, a red firework explodes a design depicting the gothic letter G. It's Gandalf! Gandalf the Grey! Gandalf is here! Great, that's all the hobbits. I I was waiting for you guys. (laughs) It's Gandalf! It's Gandalf! Gandalf the Grey! (laughs) <laughs> is this a, wait? Are they excited or are they terrified? <laughs> it doesn't say. It reads both. <laughs> it does read. It's both. Gandalf. <laughs> it's Gandalf the Grey. <laughs> Gandalf the <laughs> G Unit. <laughs> Great excitement. This motherfucker shows up in the middle of a party. He's like, "I'm gonna put my initial in the sky." Sounds like Kanye. Oh shit! It's Bilbo's birthday. Boom, boom. <laughs> No, I'm gonna let you finish. I just <laughs> but check out that GG. He just takes the microphone. <laughs> I'm always on time. <sighs> Whatever the great time. excitement, particularly among the younger hobbits, all look for Gandalf in the direction of the rocket. But a firecracker detonates behind their backs. They start to turn around. Ah, oh, sly Gandalf. Next to Bilbo is a cloud of blue smoke from the firecracker. It clears to reveal a towering figure in a long gray cloak. He wears a thin white beard and his eyes blaze under bushy eyebrows. He looks rather frightening, but the hobbits, far from being intimidated, laugh and squeal with pleasure. Gandalf bows politely to Bilbo, the only hobbit who seems discomfited by Gandalf's presence. Don't let me interrupt you, Bilbo Baggins. You are about to say something important. The hobbits laugh. They obviously don't believe Bilbo has anything startling to say, and that if he did, he would not spoil the fun by saying it at a party. Gandalf leans down and whispers in Bilbo's ear, Say it now and get it over with. Bilbo clears his throat nervously and looks about uncomfortably. I'm sorry to say, I have to leave you. I'm going away for a bit. In fact... He glances at Gandalf and forces out the words. For good. The hobbits fall silent, stunned by the news. Then some cries of no No. and shame. Shame. Bilbo looks at them with a silly apologetic smile. I I leave everything to my dear nephew Frodo. Frodo, a young hobbit, is suddenly introduced into the script. Poof. Uh, Is walking across the yard carrying a birthday cake with 111 candles burning on it. So this is where Frodo dies. (laughs) (laughs) Boom. (laughs) He looks embarrassed at the mention of his name and sets the cake down clumsily on a table. You see, being 111, the time has come. The hobbits are dismayed. More objections are shouted out. No! But Gandalf (laughs) mimics and parodies Bilbo's accidental rhyme. Eleven one, your time has come. <laughs> Some of the la- hobbits laugh, but there is a sinister, threatening undertone, which is very disturbing. <laughs> a counter chant springs up spontaneously. Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins, Baggins is eleven one. The, the fun, fun has only just begun. begun. <laughs> oh, this is da- getting dangerously into Hobbit territory. We're doing so good. This is yeah, it's bad. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The objections grow. Hobbits beat on the tables with knives and forks, repeating the chant. They recover their good spirits. Bilbo is very moved by their show of affection for him. He smiles sadly and his eyes fill with tears. He throws an angry look at Gandalf, who stands by his side, unrelenting and implacable. I am touched, dear friends. Perhaps a few days longer. Why why be hasty? They cheer. 
Hey! Gandalf shakes his head sternly, mm. but Bilbo looks back defiantly. I will. I will stay a little longer. A few months. Even a year or two. Bilbo was encouraged by the support from the audience. Despite the fact that this in no way tracks with who his character is. Yeah. But still keeps a wary eye on Gandalf, who stalks over to the wall and throws a lighted taper up into the trees overhanging the yard. A display of fireworks erupts into life, whirling rings of fire and flashing eyes. The hobbits look up in wonder, but Bilbo is frightened. Then an eye larger than the others lights up, and from it suddenly bursts out a flare in the shape of a paw clawing over the yard. Bilbo looks anxiously at Gandalf, who wags a warning finger at him. Then Gandalf tosses a firecracker over his shoulder. He speaks, but no words can be heard over the deafening explosion. But Bilbo reads his lips clearly as Gandalf mouths the words, The Ring. Bilbo looks uneasy. As the fireworks erupt and crackle, Gandalf comes over to him. He takes the hand of a hobbit lady and does a conjuring trick, removing her ring and producing it from his ear. She shrieks with pleasure. The ring! The ring! I guess. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Bilbo was even more discomfited. He looks about him, wild-eyed, for some means of escape from Gandalf's hints and promptings. He signals to the little band, and they start to play. Strange, wild dance music, as if from a 1920s club. <laughs> doesn't nah, say in the script. The, I'm just with no, the no, music no, that's swanky. playing. That's, this is a swanky joint. All that jazz. <laughs> uh, where am I? An instrument. Oh, right. One instrument is a mixture of bagpipes and saxophone. Another is something between a fiddle and a ukulele. The hobbits immediately start dancing with joyful abandon. Bilbo joins them, escaping Gandalf's censorious glaze. Good word. The <laughs> hobbits whirl and bob and kick and clap in the rich patterns of their dance. They dance in pairs but constantly change partners. Bilbo is flushed and happy, but suddenly he sweeps around and finds himself caught in Gandalf's arms, who leads him in a giddy, twisting dance. He looks deep into Bilbo's eyes. <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> everything else becomes excluded. A confused whirl of colors, a blur of trees, lanterns, stars. Okay, so, putting myself in the perspective of an executive who has not read the books mm -hmm. or seen the movies from the future, um, this seems as if Gandalf is his secret gay lover and he has proposed to him, thus, the, the ring! Right. And... He's like, we need to go elope now. Come on. Say goodbye to all your bros. I'm going to dance with you in front of all these people and make them talk. Come on. Let's go to gay love town. See, that's like, uh, is that part of the book? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not even getting That's where mad. Tom Bombadil was. <laughs> and that's actually like the vibe I typically get on things. I'm getting more of a Logan's Run vibe, which I think came out around this time. Like they're like, oh, he's 11 like the ring is going off. Like it's time to you know get going. Like you gotta die now. Like is it, or has anybody seen Logan's Run? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Oh, that's I mean, the vibe I, I'm getting. Look, I grew up in Florida, so I am on board with the Logan's Run method of true. population <laughs> Run. control. <laughs> I so much want to stay, but I know it's time to go. Curse all magic rings. These words fall spontaneously into the rhythm of the music. Give it up then, before it gnaws you all away. It gave me long life, but it hasn't been longer really, just drawn out. I feel thin, like butter that's been spread over too much bread. And if you stay, you'll start to fade and fade and fade away. E eek. E eek. You'll e eek out your years with the elves, dear Bilbo. Time is steady there. It will not stretch you as it does here. I will. I will. I'll go. The world grows suddenly dark and Bilbo looks alarmed. The music fades, then stops, as though just deciding to leave was enough to whisk him away from the Shire. 
Exterior, vegetable and flower garden beyond Bilbo's yard. Night. They have halted abruptly and Bilbo finds that Gandalf has merely spun him into his own back garden and they are standing amid the cauliflowers. Through an arch, the dancers can be glimpsed applauding the musicians and preparing for the next jig. And the ring? Very well. I'll give it to Frodo. Where is it? Um, I'm not sure. I put it down somewhere. In your pocket? Bilbo pats his pocket and fishes it out sheepishly. Sheepishly. Well, so it is. Gandalf takes out his hat and holds it out, not wanting to handle it himself. Put it in there. I'll give it to Frodo. Now that it comes to it, I don't like parting with it at all. Gandalf bristles and he looks menacingly at Bilbo. He crumples under the wizard's gaze and drops the ring in the hat. Then he smiles at Gandalf. Well, it's done. What a relief. He is suddenly lightheaded, a great burden lifted from him. He looks around the garden with a fond last look, then through the archway at the revelers. He sees Frodo dancing shyly with a buxom hobbit maiden. Ooh. Poor Frodo. Watch over him, Gandalf. And with that, Bilbo skips over the garden gate and opens it. He turns back to Gandalf. What fun to be off again and on the open road. A winding path runs away from the gate. Goodbye for the present, dear Bilbo. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, Gandalf. <laughs> it says crazily. It says crazily. <laughs> Goodbye, Gandalf. Goodbye, Gandalf. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> Bilbo trips away down the winding path. And starts to sing. Oh, get it. The road goes on and ever and on and on. Down it's, from the door where it began. And on and on and on and on and on and on and on. The road and on. goes ever on well, and you do on. <laughs> down from the door where it began. And on and on <laughs> and on and on. I'm gone. That was his, good. His Be- voice fades. Peace out, son. <laughs> his voice fades off. And the path meanders away to join the road which winds through the valley. Or is it a river? (laughs) Editor's note. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash Ferris Wheelhouse 2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bowser, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. You've been listening to the Looney Tunes Critic. He is stinking. Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to table reads. So, we've gotten up through Bilbo leaving the Shire. Crazily. That's a... Goodbye, That's a... That's a pretty good point for the first half of the first episode. Um, But they've completely failed to include the most important part of this whole sequence, which is Bilbo putting on the ring and vanishing. Right. Like, just cut that out of there. So other than, than him saying, damn all magic rings... We don't know anything about him having a magic ring. In fact, when Gandalf says the ring, he goes over to some other lady and does some magic trick with her ring. And it's like... It's very confusing. Wait, who, yeah. is, who is the Lord of the Rings? Sauron. Oh, which one's that one? That's <laughs> that's the bad. <laughs> that's the baddest of the bad guys. The he's the scary bad guy. Bad wizard? With he's the, the, he's not a wizard. Not he's Saruman. He, Saruman is the wizard. He's Sauron's the Sauron. scary eye. The eye. Sauron's the one with the 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 helmet. Yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Word. Hey, he's he's dope. 
So he, 3,000 years ago, he made everybody think like, yo, I'm a good guy and all, you know? Here, I'm going to make these rings of power and I'm going to give them to you. Like, nine for these human dudes, seven for these elves, three for these dwarves. I don't know if I got these numbers right. I'm sorry. I was sure they'll tell us about it. I just didn't know if... I can't remember recalling. But he made all these rings rings. and gave them to everybody. He's like, oh, okay, y'all, so now you all have these rings of power. Oh, but I made this one, which makes you all my slaves. Super secret. And in the darkness, bind them. Like, were you listening during the intro, or? (laughs) (laughs) And in the darkness, bind them. Yeah, Jeff. No, I'm with that, but it didn't tell me who said it. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Didn't really do a lot here. Yeah. And I, I mean, once again, I remember this scene because I've had to restart this movie so many fucking times. Like, <laughs> but yeah, he's up on stage and he's like, like, like it's like heroin, right? Like, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Wanna, yeah. Just want to like one more go at it. And then Gandalf has his intervention. Like, all right, it's time. Like, to you give shouldn't it be that. using that. Hey, Bilbo, that shit sucks. Give it up, bitch. Like, <laughs> and he's like, hey, here you go. Don't hit me again. So like, you're not setting up the Lord, the, the, the thing from the title that is yeah. the whole MacGuffin of the whole thing. Sure, yeah. which should show the repercussions of having this ring. Because uh, didn't the first one have the establishing shot of like the guy that's like, he's like, throw it! And he's like, nah. Well, the, fir- <laughs> the, the Peter Jackson films open with the entire story yeah. of the ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Of how he forged it and all the other rings and how... It vanished from a, for a time after uh, he went through Sauron's defeat right. at the hands of Isil, Isildur. Isildur. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, that was Isildur. Um, and that was, uh, that was uh, not... The elf dude. Yeah. Uh, telling him to throw Elrond. Wait, I want to be Elrond, that guy. Can yeah. I be that guy? Elrond. So, mm. Do you do um, a good Agent Smith? No. The oh. the ring betrayed Isildur yeah. to his death. Yep. And it passed from memory for a time until it was found by the most unlikely blah, blah, blah. A little fucker. Throw it into the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> He's just all measured. <laughs> it's, just, it's, like, it's, it's the door. smell. Throw it into the volcano. Yeah, he's, he's not even yelling. He's like, Isildur. <laughs> <laughs> that made me laugh because he's like, I'm there now. I'm there now. And so he's like, TikTok, motherfucker. Yeah. Sorry. Fade in. Exterior, courtyard, night. The party is over. Only the sad debris of a banquet remains. The party is over. <laughs> Frodo is bidding goodbye to his young friends, Sam, Mary, and Pippin. Sam has his arms around a pretty hobbit girl whose sleepy head rests on his shoulder. In 1970, Samwise Gamgee is played by Bill Cosby. (laughs) That's his new wife. (laughs) Yuck. They're all smoking pipes from which huge clouds of smoke rise up. They stagger off erratically. Frodo falls back into his chair and slumps on the table, asleep. A goose pecking its scraps of food, suddenly arches its neck, hissing. It turns this way and then that, trying to face an unseen enemy. Frodo jerks awake and sits upright. Behind him in the trees, is it is just possible to discern the outline of a horse and rider, and hidden by leaves, its blind skull-like face, still and watchful. <laughs> Frodo shudders and gets up. He glances about him anxiously, but sees nothing. He starts towards Bilbo's cottage. Interior, Bilbo's cottage. Night. <laughs> Gandalf is dozing by the open hearth fire at the center of the room. The flickering light shows a comfortable room cluttered with the mementos of a traveler. Frodo walks in, red-eyed, and Gandalf awakens, looking up. Where's Bilbo? <clears throat> I think he preferred to slip off quietly. Much the best way he left this for you. Gandalf points to the ring, lying on the ledge of the hearth. Frodo sits opposite Gandalf, and between them is the ring. The glowing fire casts a warm, mysterious light. He's really gone, then. The ring. Has he left me that? I wonder why. What do you know about the ring? I know it was precious to Bilbo. He found it on his adventures with the dwarves. Is it magic? It makes you disappear when you put it on, doesn't it? I mean, we could have shown that 
at the point where in the book he does that. Yep. But we decided not to, so now we have to just put it in dialogue. The number Isn't that one, right, Gandalf? The number one rule of Isn't cinema that right, is tell, don't show. That's true. Yeah. Amongst other things, it's yours. Take it. Exposition. Gandalf pretends to doze off again, but he opens an anxious eye surreptitiously as Frodo's hand stretches out to the ring. Frodo catches him watching and is suddenly reluctant and suspicious, <laughs> but he picks it up and examines it curiously. Put it on. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> he also left you a teddy. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Frodo. Just further down. <laughs> Frodo becomes excited, but also afraid. He tries to put it on compulsively. <laughs> God damn it, my read fucked it up. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> repeatedly, but he cannot. He is like a child who thrusts his hand at a flame <laughs> to dare himself and then withdraws it. So he's like, ah, ah, no, I can't. Ah. Uh, no, 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 I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. Okay. <laughs> Gandalf becomes alarmed as Frodo becomes more and more worked up. He tries to stop Frodo, but Frodo pushes away his hand. For a moment, there is a confusion of hands. <laughs> the ring falls onto the ledge. A trance-like look comes into Frodo's eye. One to rule them in the land of Mordor, where the shadows lie. Who taught you this? Frodo shakes his head. The spell is broken. I... it just came out. Frodo looks at the ring with a shudder of disgust and thrusts it at Gandalf. Here, I don't want it. You have it. Gandalf shrinks back into his chair. No, don't tempt me. Power should not be matched with power. I love how Gandalf clearly knows what is up with this ring, and he's just left it with this old doddering hobbit for all these years. Yeah, I'm, I'm As opposed to... He just starts to, like, get an idea of what the ring might be right now. And in the movie is like, oh, shit. And then in the book, he vanishes for 11 years. To figure it out. Like, yeah. So he comes back in 11 years. And Frodo's like, oh, that ring? Yeah. Sh oh, we need to go where? <laughs> what the fuck? I'm too strong for this, boy. I got some buxom <laughs> hobbit bitches. I'm kind of busy. Yeah, he comes back on Frodo's 50th birthday, in fact. Yeah, yeah. That, did I miss that? In the book. Oh, the book. oh, okay, okay, so, okay. Yeah, I was like, whoa, shit. So, yes, you missed that. I bleeped out. Like, I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> That's not in the movie. Okay. In the movie, it's like, oh, it's been a couple days. And in the book, it's like 11 years. Got the lowdown on that ring. <laughs> Try Gandalf, it on, try it on. Gandalf tries to rise. As yeah. Power should not be matched with power, but yo ass should try that ring on. Come I'm on, strong, dog. I'm strong as fuck, boy. <laughs> Don't give me that ring. Didn't, didn't you see how I was tossing fireworks? <laughs> Clearly, I'm super powerful. Got the G. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf tries to rise as if to make a grand speech, but he sinks back into his seat. In the hearth, the flames quiver and leap. Through the heat haze, Gandalf's face distorts. With his index finger, he lectures Frodo. He speaks in a low, intense voice. I am a powerful wizard, and over the power of and over me the power of the ring would gain a power still greater and more deadly. For a moment it seems that Gandalf, carried away by his intensity, is going to poke his index finger through the ring. <laughs> Or that Frodo will slip it on Gandalf's finger. <laughs> but just... <laughs> the last moment he clutches his hand, clutches, clenches his hand into a fist. If it would do that to you, what would it do to me? What did it do to Bilbo? It is only safe with someone simple, like a hobbit, like Bilbo. Fuck you! <laughs> no, say it, say it, say the line. Like me? <laughs> Goodness and innocence and pity are the only proof against its power. <laughs> the door swings open. Gandalf and Frodo start. Sam and Pippin burst in, followed by Mary. Sam and Pippin are out of breath, unable to talk. Mary, the fat hat hobbit. That's not... Nope. Sam's the fat hobbit. 
No, it's me. I'm Mary. I mean, they're all a little fat. But... Oh, shit. And simple. Mary, the oh. fat hobbit, panting desperately, forces the words out of himself in waves of breath. A dark shape. A black horse. A face without eyes. My dream. I just awoke from that dream. Gandalf jumps to his feet. So all this becomes oh, like geez. way, way more coincidental oh, now. Stop. Oh, Drop. <laughs> Shot him down. Open up shop. <clears throat> now you say your line. Am I Gandalf jumps to his feet yet? <laughs> yeah. Rock riders. <laughs> <laughs> they look at him anxiously, but Gandalf conceals his concern. It smiles at them benignly. N nothing to worry about. Some evil things are abroad. Our shadow is passing over the shire. It may, it may as well be for you to go away for a while until it passes. Frodo looks unsure. He glances at his friends. So he leaves the same night as Bilbo at this point. That's So he could just do the whole journey to Rivendell with Bilbo. Yeah, they he could dip have, out. Yeah. He knows the way. Like The Black Riders just passed Bilbo, though, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe Bilbo is dead. You could smell it on him. That's right. He'd be dead. That would be my assumption. Like, oh, shit, the Black Riders, they got the, they got the guy. Now they're here for the other guy. <laughs> they got the dude with the other dude. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Take Sam and Mary and Pippin. You've you've come into your inheritance today. Celebrate. Take a holiday. Visit Rivendell. The I'm, playing him, I'm playing him like a salesman because he's trying to sell the <laughs> ring off. So I put the ring on your dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Black Riders. <laughs> One <laughs> cock ring to rule <laughs> them all. Yeah, you know, try, try the ring on different places. <laughs> fingers are so last year. The Hobbit's faces light up. Pippin, the skinny Hobbit. Jumps for joy. Hooray to the elves! Yeah, they break into excited chatter. Gandalf looks out of the window, searching the yard. A new day is dawning. The hobbits scuttle out of the door. Goodbye, Gandalf. I haven't bothered packing or anything. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm going on an adventure. <laughs> I'm just gonna walk to Rivendell right this instant. Fuck off. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Gandalf smiles. You forgot the ring. Frodo runs back and grabs it, forgetting his earlier doubts. So he has no idea why he's leaving the Shire. Yeah. Still no idea what the ring is. We, it just, he's this, gaslighting him into doing the quest. Yeah, Gandalf is not like helping him. He's like, he's, he's he's like, like a fucking asshole. Celebrate. Maybe this, is what happens, this is what happens when you adapt wallpaper instead of a book. How urgent is this paper? <laughs> <laughs> Frodo runs back and grabs it Forgetting his earlier doubts Oh he just forgets He puts the chain about his neck Never said it was on a chain either No that's just a thing that happened He shudders for a moment as the ring slips down to his chest And remember Don't put it on Unless you have to What a dick He's like put, put it on Do it Put it on Don't put it on Don't do it Don't do it Don't do it Don't do it It's a bad that's idea wrong. Frodo smiles and is gone. Just read into that smile what you will, old man. I don't care about any of these people. Yeah, I don't either. Except Gandalf. Gandalf is kind of like, what the fuck's going on? Why do you want to get rid of this? He's a sneaky old fuck. Right, like, right. He likes little hobbit people in holes. I'm too strong for that ring. <laughs> Gandalf watches him go with an expression of infinite sadness. Infinite sadness. <laughs> Mr. G. How do I read that? You're like Mr. T, but Mr. Mr. G. G here. G here. <laughs> I mean, really, that's just... He's like, okay, we gotta get this shit going. We don't need to set up anything. We just need to move the events. I feel like this is gonna be more my speed of the movie. I feel like there's a lot of fight, a little bit of talking, and a lot of fucking fighting. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Give it a ring. Why? Just put it on. Don't put it on. Don't put it on. Put it on. I've changed my mind about that shit. He's like, what, what, hey, what, what did you whisper a while ago? Black Riders. <laughs> What's that? Uh, I'll be more prepared to deal with them when I'm Gandalf the White. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, oh. I gotta die first. <laughs> Wait a minute. I gotta get my white robes to deal with the Black Riders. Let me get my Fuck. white robes. Why? Ah, <laughs> oh, the Black Riders. It's because it's 1970. <laughs> I hood up. Exterior, Valley of the Shire, early morning. The Shire lies below, and the hills rise all around it. Bilbo's cottage is just visible. In the foreground, the waterfall. Next to it, the road. 
and the four hobbits toiling up it. Light packs on their backs that they never bothered to pack. They just... <laughs> they had go bags ready. <laughs> They're bugging out, man. Get your adventure satchels. It's like just they, filled with turnips. Like <laughs> I'm gonna make these for Levensies. Cauliflower. Um, as they pass, a black rider appears on a hilltop in the far distance, just picked out against the sky. He looks down at the shot. Uh, at the Shire below, and the hobbits do not see him. I'm tired of these motherfucking hobbits in this motherfucking Shire. Who that? <laughs> Bilbo's song, The Road Goes Ever On and On, has begun, and his voice is heard singing. But as Frodo gets closer, we see that he is singing too, and gradually mm-hmm. his voice takes over from Bilbo's. The song continues through the first stage of their journey. Oh boy. The road goes ever on and on. Away from the door where it began Earth and home are gone, are gone And I must follow if I can Sam, Mary, and Pippin are the chorus Hill and water under sky Pass them by, pass them by The road continues through a pastoral landscape In the full flush of spring The road winds and twists endlessly into the distance and lanes and paths run down to meet it. The hobbits recede along it, in a jaunty wood, singing away, happy to be starting a holiday on this fine morning. It's a holiday now. In Rivendell. Exterior, countryside in spring, various Various day. day. (laughs) Their paths cross in the brow of... Cross... Their path crosses the brow of a hill, and they come upon an orchard full of apple blossom. They skip through it, and the wind swirls the white petals around them like a snowstorm. The road goes ever on and on, away from the door where it began. The ones who walked before are gone, hobbit, elf, dwarf, and man. Apple and thorn, not and slow. Let them go, let them go. A path leads them out of the swirling petals into a field covered with mushrooms. The hobbits are delighted. They set to, picking and eating them as fast as they can. They begin to laugh and giggle, becoming rather unsteady on their feet. They lurch on their way with contented smiles on their faces. The world looks a little misty, different. Suddenly, they are in a field of buttercups. Naked children run and play. What? Run and play among the golden flowers. What? The hobbits blink and grin, and Mary belches. They run over a hill and into a flock of sheep, which opens up to let them through and closes behind them again. Now they are in a vast plowed field. And there are perhaps 50 scarecrows. What the fuck? Very nasty faces and scraggy arms fluttering in the wind. What is the odds that two scripts in a row there would be the word scraggy? <laughs> well, that was the name scraggy before. <laughs> Still, this fucking like- scraggy. Those letters in that configuration. Like, <laughs> I've never heard that word before in my life. And now it says fucking scraggy twice. I would be upset <laughs> if the scarecrows had more clothes than the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> They hurry on, somewhat sobered. <laughs> the road goes ever oh, on and on. And on. <laughs> Where will it lead? On and on. A shadow falls across our way. We must go on. We cannot stay. Trees and flowers and leaves and grass. Let them pass. Let them pass. Exterior hayfield, day. The four hobbits walk through the long grass, just their heads showing like marbles rolling on a carpet. That's the weirdest metaphor I've ever read. Dude, these guys went through a fucking thesaurus. It's the 70s, man. It's the 70s. They didn't have the internet. Like, Hey, hey, you know how when you see people walking through a field but there's like high grass and you just see the heads, you know what that's like? You know what that's like? That's like marbles on carpet. Am I right? when you're playing marbles. Well, they they probably looked down and they had shag carpet at this point. It's like when you're playing marbles on carpet. (laughs) Marbles on carpet, right? It's like when you're playing marbles. That's how I'm going to start describing sex. (laughs) It's like when you're playing marbles on carpet. You know when you're playing marbles on carpet. Hey, baby, I'm home. 
And you want to play marbles on carpet? <laughs> and then they get pregnant. What? <laughs> Pull out the carpet. I want to play marbles. I want to play marble. <laughs> Hard mode marble. <laughs> Clack. <laughs> now put some marbles in you. Oh. <laughs> Get some marbles in the circle, you know what I'm saying? Man, he's yeah. Marble, he's yeah. marble slap. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Don't. I'm pretty sure this guy's British. <laughs> Which <laughs> one? I was like, hello. <laughs> the four hobbits. Well, food of foes of Remember, <laughs> one of the men writing the script is an architect. Yeah, I'd never written a script before, so. I, I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Really, not an unbelievable story at this point. There's more description of the landscape. I know more about where they're walking than them. True. <laughs> There's more description of the hayfield and the sheep. Well, one of them's fat and one of them's skinny. Yeah, got it. And what do we know about Frodo? Nothing. Gullible? <laughs> He's a dumbass. Yeah, uh, that's what you know. He's a fucking idiot. I'll take the ring. I'll Oops. take it. No, I don't want it. Uh, I might take it. I'm going to go on holiday. Bye-bye. So, Gandalf, I'll take the <laughs> ring. Oh, almost forgot it. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. The one thing. The one, one ring. <laughs> I had one fucking job. I lost it. I left it here on this chain we never mentioned before. G-Unit. Uh, Suddenly the tall grass. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Marbles on carpet. <laughs> Their song comes to an end. Thank Christ. Suddenly the tall grass stops and the hobbits are confronted with a line of big people. Big people. Cutting the grass with scythes. Startled, the hobbits scuttle back. One of the men catches a glimpse of a small being jumping back into the grass. He blinks and wipes his brow, then turns to the man next to him. It must be the heat, or did I see a halfling? Halfling? Where? There's a reward if you catch one of them. The two men look about them, then resume working. Sam, Mary, and Pippin scurry away, breaking out of the long grass further down and hiding behind a haystack. Why, where is there a reward? They live walking distance. Yeah. 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 Like, it's like that's a hey, whole village. There, there is a reward for the halflings. I'm gonna go on an expedition. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk over and get me one. Gosh darns halflings. <laughs> I was in my rutabaga garden getting look, my cabbages and shit. Look like, at him rubbing his jewelry in her face. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get your pretty ring? I like that ring necklace. I bet you stole that shit, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> He's like waiting quietly. <laughs> and that's the end of these guys. <laughs> no more no more big people. No more one man no, to I, man. I, I think these are the new like Main villains. <laughs> <gasps> Wait, you the, did the, say all the villains start with an S and end with an N. <laughs> Second man. Pump. Saruman. <laughs> <laughs> Second man. Sauron. Second man. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you think the Dark Rider is going to show up where these guys are and be like, Hobbit. They're going to be like, Shire. Oh, I don't know. They're like, <laughs> oh, is, is there an, a, a reward? They take all that way. <laughs> we're, we're after that reward. Soon as we're done scything. Yeah, give, me the, the end, the, give me the end of the work day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would go get the reward, but it's a 20 minute walk. <laughs> and I got saw than the dude. <laughs> 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 Uh, I think two men look about. Frodo lags behind, a mischievous smirk on his face. He jumps over one of the scythe blades and struts up and down among the men, singing. What a dick! I like him. Oh, I'm a hobbit of the Shire. Am I the halfling you desire? Fuck this. What the fuck? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it just gets fucking weirder. Frodo has the ring in his hand. The men are startled. Who? Huh? Then nasty looks cross their faces. Uh. They close in on him, ready to jump. Oh, reapers of the hay, oh, reapers of dismay. <clears throat> At that, he leaps into the air, doing a somersault. He puts on the ring and vanishes in midair. Oh, no. The reapers are truly dismayed. Aww. Aww. A cow pie suddenly splatters, struck by an invisible foot. 
Frodo materializes behind the haystack, holding the ring in his hand. Sam, Merry, and Pippin are still more amazed and dismayed than the Reapers. Frodo's head is reeling, as if he is touched on an experience he does not understand. He has a guilty, sheepish look on his face. It just got itself to slip itself on. Well, who, who wants Sam? I'm not I'm Sam. Sam. I'm, I'm Sam. Sam. You're the you're the strong guys. I'm, yeah. While you, Master Frodo, stuck your foot in it. In the background, the Reapers scratch their heads and argue. The hobbits hurry away toward the winding road. Fade out. Yeah, this is not good. Oh, it's pretty confusing. What? Yeah. So John Borman's like, they were baffled because they didn't read the book. They were baffled because it's bad and you didn't explain anything. And reading a book it should not be requirement. Yeah. a requirement yeah, to understand sure. a movie. Yeah, yeah you put, uh, you did the opposite of the problem we have now. You put these boring ass fucking characters in this brilliant world that you're creating that I can absolutely see in my mind and then the, those are the most boring dickish people that are just roaming in it and inhabiting I don't care about any of these people they don't make any sense either like why is don't it- wear the ring unless you have to well these guys are being dicks yeah well like, which ones yeah like the, the guys were just working yeah well they were like oh there's a reward if you catch them Cause that's a thing, right? But imagine like you're a janitor and you're sweeping, and some dick comes up there, just starts jumping over your broom and shit, and then just fucking <laughs> kicking shit. It's like, oh yeah, no, he's the hero. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. Wow, you're a dick, Frodo. Get like, the fuck uh, out of here. You if, why can't you fall in a volcano or something? Yeah, I don't understand the mission and the problem. I, I really wish now I wouldn't have watched the movies so that you guys I could be like, I don't know what the fuck. Is supposed to be <laughs> I, there's. I don't believe the the hobbits understand the mission. They are in grave danger, and they think they're just going on vacation. Yeah, the ring is almost inconsequential unless they were just. Also, unless there was going to be a lot of facial acting by Gandalf. You have the Black maybe. Rider on top of the hill looking down at them. Is he just a take spy? It. Just take the yeah, ring. What is he doing? Yeah, because they made him. They meet him on the road in the movie, and it's like terrifying, right? That's a famous scene. They're looking like, yeah. for him, reaching yeah. over, and they're like, "Oh, we gotta hide," because Gandalf's like, <sighs> and they and they do the the Hitchcock. Yeah, that mm-hmm. that zoom out. Like yeah. that, that, that scene's sick, right? And then in this one, Gandalf like sees the Black Rider, and it's just unfazed. Yeah. Like, also, just like, oh, yeah, just go ahead. Also, I I'm a powerful wizard. There's a black rider, like, right in the yard? Yeah, you guys should run away. I'll wait here. And- He's totally going to meet them in Rivendell. I'm going to be pissed if he <laughs> just walk with them. He's going to be like, ah, took you guys long enough to get here. Uh, where have you been? I mean, granted, this guy is trying to cram, you know, a 12-hour trilogy You're into right. two and a half hours. You're absolutely right. So, of course, he doesn't have time to set any of the important things up. It's much more important that we get this new scene of these guys and cutting six grass. six songs? <laughs> the That's fuck true. is he trying to do? That's he could have spent more well, time telling so, me than singing. So the, the song thing is a big deal in the books, man. Is like, it? Like, it's yeah. It's in every, like, tons of singing. This so is awful. They, they, like they cut song. most of it out in the movies. Like, Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Tolkien uh, wrote all these songs... He actually developed the languages. Yeah. I've heard, that and Elvish. Part. I've heard that. Part. Oh, by the way, I have two Lord of the Rings swords up right here. There's Narsil, the sword that was broken. Oh. And Gandalf's sword, Glamdring. Gandalf's sword. Yeah, because he's a wizard with a sword. Gandalf's other sword. The stick. <laughs> the stick. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sword stick. Sword stick. <laughs> Very powerful stick. Right. Okay, guys, I want you all to know we are now on Patreon. When we don't have technical issues like we did tonight, uh, Patreon membership gets you, uh, you get to watch us record this live, um, which is like two months before it airs. We're recording this on October 22nd, 
This episode will be posted publicly on December 17th. We're almost in the 2020. <gasps> it's almost Christmas. It's almost Christmas. <laughs> Only everybody. 10 more wakes ups. <laughs> so, <laughs> 10 more so sleeps. go to patreon.com slash table reads. Sign up there. You can get on the live streams. All our episodes will be also available to you four days early with no ads. And I'll send you a pair of my socks. There's there's all kinds of great rewards there <laughs> if you just sign up with us. And if you want Josh's socks, sign up. I won't even wash them. Add you can to the, sniff like, them. You can, you can sniff them. Ah. And I will send you a feet of jo- a, a <laughs> picture of Josh's feet to go with it. Hell yeah. I have you nice can feet smell too. them and jack off to the picture if that's what you're into. You could jack off in the sock. I think people with feet fetish is a little more sophisticated. It's not so much a I don't, jerking off. I don't know. It's, right. I cannot get in those people's heads. Do tell us. Uh, <laughs> it's a sensual thing, right? Because when, you, when you're looking at someone's feet, that's what really carries them through life. Like that's unless true. they're unless they're in a wheelchair, then it's these. But that's not that fun. But for most, people. so my question, I guess, and this is what I really am taking away from this script is: Do foot fetishists fetishize the butts of paralyzed people? No, not at all. It's the the hands. They want the gloves. Good to know. The calluses, yeah. Guys, like and subscribe. <laughs> Uh, check us out on all your favorite platforms. Oh, and let us not forget, uh, our friends over at Screenplay Archaeology have done a full episode on this very script, so go check that out. Yeah. Um, there will be a link in the show notes for that. Hey, click below. We'll see you next week for uh, part two of John Borman's Lord of the Rings, Electric- which will be episode 101. Oh. Bye. 101 episodes. LOL. We're going to club them and make a coat out of them. Yeah. We're, we're going to make a hobbit coat. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see you next week. Until then, we'll miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black. Black. black.